On July 25th, NASA's most ambitious Mars flyby mission was in full swing until a cascade of leaked images of the interstellar object 3, I, Atlas triggered an unexpected emergency shutdown. Within hours, a confidential advisory halted millions of dollars worth of scheduled experiments, cutting off all future observations. Officially, the action was explained as a data integrity review, but insiders have suggested a more unsettling possibility, a discovery so extraordinary that it forced NASA's hand. If the leaked images contain something too dangerous to disclose, why has every trace been wiped away? The mystery begins with the leak and the resulting chaos. The first release appeared at 207 Universal Time coordinated on July 21st, 2025, not through a public archive or press briefing, but via encrypted uploads on a secure internal communications channel viewable by only a select group of NASA and contractor accounts. The file names were generic, but metadata told a different story, exposure times, filter bands, and instrument IDs match the most sensitive segments of the Mars flyby campaign. IT security swiftly flagged the transfer, initiating chain of custody protocols. By 224, the alert had escalated from a junior analyst in Houston to the incident response head at the agency. Off record accounts reference frantic chat exchanges, sudden system lockdowns, credential audits, and urgent outreach to project scientists across the US and Europe. The files themselves looked ordinary at first glance, fits headers standard calibration frames, with no obvious manipulation, but the timestamps aligned with observations that, by the official schedule, should not have been processed yet. This suggested someone had circumvented the embargo, pushing raw data before the principal investigators finished their review. The normally routine communications channel became a high-risk zone, with every access attempt leaving a trail. Forensic procedures demanded a full trace, Yet the rapid escalation created gaps, moments where it was unclear who had viewed the files or whether they had been copied before the lockdown. By 2.32, a freeze order was issued. All experiments tied to 3i Atlas were suspended. Observatories offline signals dispatched and automated scripts canceling uploads. The advisory cited data integrity concerns, but the unusually sharp wording hinted at deeper issues. No press release followed only a wave of redacted emails and blanked out dashboards. This was no simple scheduling error. It resembled a breach response to those caught in the clampdown. The message was unmistakable. Something in those images had triggered NASA's highest level of alarm. Privately, staff asked the same question, what had they seen? And why the total silence? The order didn't just halt one transfer, it erased the entire Mars flyby campaign from October's schedule. Managers receive an urgent internal advisory labeled as a data integrity review and marked with the seriousness typically reserved for catastrophic hardware failures or planetary protection threats. Teams at JPL and the Planetary Defense Coordination Office were directed to stand down. Pre-booked observation windows disappeared from shared calendars. Valuable instrument time on Mars orbiters went dark. The canceled block had been designed to capture high-resolution spectra of 3i Atlas as it passed 30 million kilometers from Mars. Now, that chance was lost. Proposal drafts froze. Pipelines rerouted. Budgets flagged for oversight review. The October operation had been the only opportunity for close-range analysis before the object left detection range. Internal memos ordered personnel to halt data acquisition and avoid public discussion until the review ended. Principal investigators, many with careers tied to the mission, were locked out of their work. For some, the blackout reduced months of effort to system errors and revoked logins. Others scrambled to account for lost funding and explained to international collaborators why the campaign had collapsed overnight. The silence stretched worldwide, enforced by a single and signed advisory. What was buried in those images? Early captures of 3i Atlas didn't match expected comet behavior. They showed a tail so geometrically perfect it resembled a precisely drawn arc trailing the core, utterly unlike the diffuse or chaotic plumes typical of icy bodies. The aspect ratio was extreme, slender, and sharply defined beyond anything in Minor Planet archives. Atlas control room staff briefly suspected a processing glitch, but the symmetry was consistent across frames. Filters and exposures. 
Then came the unusual reflections, small points of intense brightness along the sunward edge in multiple exposures. These weren't random cosmic rays or faulty pixels. They appeared and disappeared in rhythm with the object's slow rotation, precisely aligned with its tail and body shape. Pixel intensity spikes suggested not just strong reflectivity, but concentrated metallic glints. Plotted. The flares formed a grid-like arrangement over the surface. One analyst, studying the histograms, remarked it seemed less like a frozen fragment of rock than a polished shard catching sunlight as it spun. An AI-driven surface reconstruction, performed as part of a routine verification of the data, only added to the mystery. Rather than producing the expected irregular, uneven body, the generated model revealed flat planes and sharp boundaries, facets that reflected and redirected light with remarkable precision. The system flagged the surface as an anomaly, inconsistent with any comet in its training archive. The term unnatural began appearing in Slack conversations, initially in jest, but gradually with a note of unease. Measured parameters came in, the tail's tightness maintained a near 12 to 1 ratio, narrower than any documented in the last 10 years. Reflectivity peaks were more than three times higher than typical readings for carbon-rich or icy objects. Even the placement of the bright flares seemed patterned. Their clusters spaced at intervals not consistent with random gas release or dust emission. With continued analysis, the frames became increasingly difficult to rationalize. In the control room, a shift in mood occurred. Curiosity gave way to tension. A senior observer with three decades of comet photography quietly shut his laptop and left. Another, visibly shaken, began composing a message to the project lead. Meanwhile, the images were being duplicated, hashed, and locked into secure archives. But the feeling that events were slipping beyond control grew stronger. If these structured signals held up under lab testing, the object wasn't just another wandering interstellar fragment, it might represent something no existing scientific text had accounted for. Spectroscopy remains indifferent to appearance. Remove the intrigue of a precision edge tail or mirror bright reflections. And what is left is raw data, numerical values, wavelengths, absorption markers mapping the chemistry of whatever intercepts sunlight. At Harvard Center for Astrophysics, the first process spectra from the Mars flyby dataset arrived in the pre-dawn hours of July 21st. The department head, a professor seasoned by decades of cometary analysis, handled the pipeline personally, anticipating results showing water, carbon dioxide, and perhaps minor organics. Instead, the plot revealed something far stranger. Dominating the readout was a broad, shallow decline centered just beyond one micron in wavelength, precisely where nickel reveals its signature. This absorption band, well known to scientists studying metal-rich asteroids, was fundamentally misplaced in a comet's profile. The dataset was pristine, no interference from cosmic rays, no calibration errors, an AI denoising routine, trained on thousands of comet spectra from the past decade, flagged the region as an anomaly labeling the match as low confidence and non-cometary. Under normal conditions, dust bands in this spectral zone are crowded, silicate particles and carbon compounds disperse light in highly regular ways, creating a textured forest of minor dips. Here, the usual dust imprint was absent. The dip was broader, smoother, and deeper, fitting nickel, not unstructured ice. Cross-checking against every comet entry in the Minor Planet Center's repository produced no matches. Even unusual examples, like the extreme CO2-rich comets from the Oort cloud, still showed standard dust slopes. Three IATLAS did not. MIT's analysis unit, running its own independent pipeline, replicated the finding, the same one-micron nickel-centered anomaly, coupled with no evidence of the familiar water ice feature at 1.5 microns. The absence itself was as revealing as its counterpart. In encrypted emails and private Slack posts, the Harvard and science team researchers compared outcomes. Their shared conclusion was unequivocal. The spectral data defied all expectations for a comet. The nickel absorption band was genuine, the dust imprint absent, and the AI failed to classify the object at all. For the Harvard researcher, the data represented both a mystery and a warning.
she composed a memo, preliminary spectrum inconsistent with known cometary or asteroidal material. Recommend embargo pending further verification. The phrasing was cautious. The implications? Unsaid. In planetary science, even one unexplained absorption line can ignite years of discussion. This anomaly, however, was greater than a curiosity. It challenged the entire inventory of natural celestial bodies. The immediate task was to recheck the data repeatedly and prepare for the inevitable questions. What kind of object reflects a nickel signature near one micron but shows none of the dust or ice that mark every known comet? And if the spectrum was accurate? What deeper secrets might three I Atlas still conceal? Interstellar visitors routinely test astronomy's assumptions. In 2017, Umuamua swept through the solar system, its movement bending, in ways gravity alone could not explain. Official orbit models stumbled, and even with complete data, the figures refused to stabilize. Its velocity, its lack of a visible coma, and a faint yet measurable acceleration all raised doubts. Some attributed the drift to gas venting, others to the object's slender, flattened profile, yet the disquiet stemmed from what calculations couldn't accommodate, a subtle, persistent deviation that left seasoned dynamicists perplexed. Nor was this the first time deep space records blurred at the edges. Voyager 1, transmitting from the heliosphere's frontier in 2012. Experienced telemetry drops just as it crossed into interstellar space. Logbooks blamed cosmic rays, but the timing felt too precise. Years earlier, the Galileo probe's tape recorder froze during its Europa flyby, corrupting a block of high-resolution data, later buried in appendices and redacted releases. Each incident carried the same official refrain, technical failure, radiation noise, software faults, yet a pattern persisted. When evidence exceeded expectations, documentation thinned, these echoes, Umuamua's unexplained drift, Voyager's data lapse, Galileo's missing frames haunt every new oddity. For those following three, I Atlas, the deja vu was impossible to dismiss. Another interstellar arrival, more inexplicable readings, and once again bureaucratic silence followed by redaction. The past is strewn with omissions and vanished files. Reminders that the unknown is often met not with clarity, but with sealed archives and cautious memoranda. The question now extended beyond what 3i Atlas represented. It pressed on why history keeps repeating and who decides what truths remain hidden. Inside internal Slack channels, the discussion turned volatile. One message sent by an anonymous postdoc moments before accounts were revoked stated, if this is not natural, it's not just our decision to keep quiet. The thread fractured in real time. Some defended the blackout, citing NASA's strict security protocols and the risk of international fallout if the anomaly proved sensitive. Others, mostly young researchers, demanded transparency, arguing for open science and the public's right to know, especially when the data might signal something beyond known cometary physics. An MIT materials analyst inadvertently copied into the chat, shared a comparison chart the one micron spectral feature aligned almost perfectly with nickel chromium alloys used in aerospace hulls, matching in depth and width. He attached a reference spectrum from a SpaceX fairing, adding, not saying it's a probe, but if it were, this is exactly how it would look. Security monitors quickly intervened, issuing cautions, cease written speculation. All further discussion under review. The tone was unmistakable. Yet arguments intensified. A senior investigator threatened resignation if forced to conceal what he called proof of artificiality. In contrast, another, in a later leaked private message, feared retaliation. If this goes public and we're caught suppressing it, we'll lose credibility forever. The alloy debate spilled into encrypted side chats. Theories emerged, meteorite contamination, instrument misreadings, even sabotage, but the consistent reflective grid, absence of dust, and spectral alignment with engineered metals undermined the natural explanation. The term probe appeared first as a jest, then as a provocation. No one dared declare it openly, but the possibility hung over every conversation. By dawn, the Slack server was frozen, permissions revoked, logs sealed for audit. The final visible line lingered on the screen 
If it's not natural, then what does that make us? On July 1, 2025, the Atlas Telescope captured the first verified images of 3 I Atlas, an interstellar body whose leaked frames led NASA to suspend its Mars flyby spectroscopy campaign just three months later. Classified advisories issued within hours cited a data integrity review, scrubbing October's observation plans and leaving researchers stranded without explanation. Analyses from Harvard and MIT teams revealed a spear-like tail, mirror-bright reflections, and a nickel-dominated spectrum, traits never documented in comet science. Parallels to Oumuamua's puzzling drift and Voyager's intermittent signals illustrated a recurring pattern of anomalies left unresolved. While official logs verify the missions shut down, the full content of those leaked images and the reason for NASA's rapid intervention remain sealed. The evidence underscores a persistent friction between scientific truth and institutional restraint until restricted archives are made public. The real nature of 3 iAtlas and why NASA silenced its study so abruptly remains an open question.